Welcome to the Pravda Audio Digitization Tutorial. First, make sure the laptop is plugged into a power source, and the Tascam audio interface is plugged into the laptop via the USB cord. Next, take the cable labeled 3.5 to Tascam and plug it into your playback device, whether it is the Broxonic tape player pictured here or the Sony microcassette player. If you're using the Broxonic, you will also need to plug its adapter into a power source. The Sony microcassette player, however, runs on batteries. Now, take the red and black ends of the cable and attach the gold adapters. As pictured here, the gold adapters then plug into the Tascam's left and right line guitar in ports. And now that you have connected your playback device, the Tascam audio interface, and the laptop, we can start digitizing your audio. Adjust the input left and input right knobs so that the etched line points directly toward the top. These may need to be adjusted later, but this is a good starting position. Next, on the laptop, click on the Audacity application in the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. When the program opens, make sure the three drop-down selections circled here are set as you see them. Starting from the left, the first should be Windows Direct Sound, the second, US 122A to B, and the third, 2 Stereo Recording. Down in the bottom left of the screen, make sure the project rate is set to 48,000 Hz. If it is a particularly high quality audio recording, you may wish to raise this to 96,000 Hz. When you're ready, click on the red record button and press play on your playback device. As you're recording, watch Audacity's levels in the bar next to the small microphone icon at the top. If the green bars get close to the far right, you will see them begin to turn yellow and red, warning that you may get some distorted audio. If this is the case, you should turn the Tascam audio input knobs down to the left. Conversely, if the audio track is barely visible in the main Audacity window, you will not be able to hear the audio, and you should turn the knobs on the Tascam up to the right a bit. Either way, you can stop playback on your cassette player, rewind, and quit Audacity without saving, and re-record. When playback is complete, click the square yellow button to stop Audacity recording. Now that you're finished, you may want to remove some unwanted silence from your recording. As you can see from the flat line, this portion is silent, and if you click and drag over it with your mouse, it will be highlighted. From the Edit menu, choose Delete, and that portion will be removed. Audacity can also reduce tape hiss and other noise. To do so, Click and drag to select a few seconds of the audio that are nothing but noise. Under the Effects tab, choose Noise Reduction. Click the Get Noise Profile button and close the Noise Reduction window. Select the whole audio track by holding down Ctrl A and choose Noise Reduction from the Effects menu again, and click OK. Choosing Normalize from the Effects menu is a good idea as well, once you're done with other editing. The default values Audacity gives you are fine. To save your file, do not use Audacity's Save Project function, unless you are planning to do further audio editing later in Audacity. No other program or device can play back Audacity's native project format, so we need to export rather than simply save. To do so, go to File and choose Export Audio. To save a high-quality archival or master copy, choose WAV Microsoft 32-bit Float PCM as the file type, and give the file a file name without using spaces or punctuation. 
create a use or access copy, you can choose MP3 file as the type. You may wish to export once as a high quality WAV file and once as the smaller MP3 file. Optionally, you can add appropriate metadata information about the audio file such as title and creator in the metadata pop-up window. And now you have a digitized version of your audio recording. Thanks for watching.